Andy Stevenson for Severe MMA, and I'm here beside Paddy McCarry, who's just scored a phenomenal comeback submission win over Samir Kadi in the third round. Uh, how are you feeling, first? You, you, you told me your foot's in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, my foot's in a bad way, but I'd break both my feet to get that one, so I don't really care about the foot at the minute. I'm still feeling very good. How are you feeling about the win overall? Yeah, I'm ecstatic. It was an absolute dogfight, and uh, I just had to keep going until the, until the very end to get the finish, but so I'm happy I got it. Obviously, it, emotions kind of spilled over at the end. It seemed that he was protesting the tap. It looked like a clear tap to me. Um, can you explain, or can you <laughs> kind of recap what happened? Yeah, well, I don't know. I certainly felt the tap. I even held it on for a wee bit after the tap before Mark Goddard jumped in. And then um, whenever I let go, he seemed to throw a punch. So, I don't know, the tension seemed to raise a wee bit after that. But it's just post-fight adrenaline, you know what I mean? Adrenaline's a hell of a joke. So, there's no hard feelings for me, um, for Samir. And I uh, apologize for acting a wee bit out of character after the beller. But you know how it is. You know, was there any bad blood coming into this, or or no? There was no like personal or bad blood, but at the end of the day, they're coming to steal my dreams. You know what I mean? I have like, I'm taking every fight serious, and I'm looking at these people in the eye like they're coming to, to take my dreams. So every fight like um, has a, bit, a little bit of emotion attached to it. It's nothing personal to them. It's just every opponent like. I want to take them out. I really want to hurt them. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, when you came in here just a few moments ago, you had on your phone a quote. I don't know if you, if you want to sh share the quote or anything like that, but it, it seemed like it was something meaningful to you. Yeah, well, I, I don't know it off by heart, but it was just something that I read at the start of the week. You know, like sometimes you, you get a bit nervous. Like I knew that this guy was no mug and I knew it was going to be a really tough fight. So I just felt like that quote um, resonated with me a lot. So I just put it as my screensaver and I've been reading it a wee bit this week. Obviously, look, the, the whole fight didn't go, but he, there was a point deducted in the first round. It seemed to me that you were two, not two rounds down because obviously the point deduction, but it was a tough fight in here. Like, how were you feeling in the fight itself before, leading up to the submission? Yeah, yeah, he was very strong. Um, he elbowed me in the back of the head, clean shot. I was seeing stars, to be honest. After that, when I stood up, Mark Goddard was asking me, was all right? I was telling him I'm good to go, but I was in La La Land, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, it took me a wee bit to get my feet underneath me in the second round. Then I tried to chop his leg and my foot went. So I think I've broke my foot. So I didn't get off to the, the best start, but there is no quit in me. I've, if, as long as I'm in there, I'm going to be trying to finish the fight and approve that tonight. You know, it, was it um, the takedown? He seemed to be quite successful with that. When you were going for the heel hook, did you feel like you were close with it? Yeah, the heel hook was close. Like, like if, if I had been able to get my leg across his body, I would have been able to snap his leg or blow his knee out. But... Um, it's not something that would really advise people to go for in a fight, but it seemed like he was just trying to hold on to the body lock and raid the round out. So I just jumped on it to try and create a scramble to get on top, and then he ended up having a good bait on it. So I tried to have a go at it, but he's a big, strong lad, and it would have been hard to top him to heel hook, to be honest. The, uh, the crowd re reaction after was, was absolutely incredible. They were going nuts for you. I saw a beautiful moment after you exited the cage. Am I right say, was that your brother? Yeah, potentially that's, my that you? bro. that's my wee bro, Reese. Yeah, he loves it at the minute. He's, he, he's starting to watch all the fights and study all my opponents, and uh, he's starting to get to every fight. So, just like it means a lot to me to make, make a good example um, for him to look up to, you know. He's giving you game plans now? Yeah, yeah, he's giving me game plans. He's getting a wee bit older now, and he's sort of expecting wins before. It was a good luck. I hope you win and all. You're the best. Now it's like, you better smoke that guy. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's been a wee bit of pressure, but uh, yeah, it's just, can't even put the feeling in the words whenever. You're on that cage and just seeing my wee brother, um, just with a smile on his face, is priceless, you know. Coming into this uh, this event, it was this fight that was earmarked as kind of the one to watch. Yeah. Taking out a guy like Samir Kadi, of course there was adversity that you had to come through in, in the fight, but to go in there, to be you know maybe down on the scorecards and then get the submission win in, in a comeback fashion, what does that say about you and where does that put you in this division? Um, I think it puts me right up there because he was no mug, you know what I mean? Every fight that I've had in my pro career, none of them have been easy fights. Right from my pro debut with Pedro Pleska, my first fight in Cage Wars was on two weeks' notice, actually replacing Samir Cotty. He pulled out against James Webb. I jumped in on two weeks' notice, fought a former world champion. In my last fight, I fought the Cage Wars amateur late heavyweight champion, undefeated as an amateur, Angus Hewitt, another big juice head coming down from late heavyweight. He's not coming here to lose, you know what I mean? Put him away. Then Samir, 4-1. One of French's, one of French, um, his top guys. Like you know what I mean. He's coming over here to take me out too. So every single fight has been a hard fight for me. So 
next fight, give me one of fucking Matt Bonner's opponents. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give me a break. But nah, I knew it was in for a tough fight. Um, so I'm glad that I'm kind of glad that it went how it did because I know it'll stand by me. You know what I mean? I was going into the fight two rounds down, my foot was mangled, and I was still able to put that out of the pull it out of the bag. So there's never going to be a time I'm getting into the third round thinking that I'm still going to lose the fight, no matter how the first two rounds go. You know what I mean? I'm always going to believe I'll be able to finish it. Just a couple more, and then, and then I'll let you get on your way. You've called a couple of your, your opponents juice heads now, and it's a hot topic at the moment. The UFC have parted ways with USADA. Everyone's talking about you know, PEDs in the sport. How do you feel about people who, who you, know, you believe are, are taking PEDs in, in MMA? Yeah, I think 90%, especially middleweight, sick. Middleweight and up, fucking 90% of the guys are on the fucking juice lick. It's completely obvious. Look at that guy. He looks like he's ready to fucking walk on a NIFMA stage, you know what I mean? Double D titties pointing to the ground. They're all juice heads, but one place you can't put juice is on the fucking chin. So I'm coming for all these juice heads' chins, you know? Every single one of them. I take a personal when I know they're fucking juiced up and they're coming in there to try and rattle my brain, you know what I mean? And then they try and be fake humble, like, oh, I'm humble, I'm humble. It's because they know they're fucking sticking steroids in their arse to come in there and try and fight you, you know what I mean? So I'm coming to take all the cunts out. Because see, the thing is, See if you're taking juice from you start training in this sport, you always have holes in your game because you're able to juice your way out of things and you're able to use your strength to do things, you know what I mean? I've always been a skinny kid. I was never the strongest, you know what I mean? I was never the most gifted kid. I had to do everything the hard way. I had to put in the hard yards. I had to learn techniques down to a T for it to work on these big guys, you know what I mean? So I'm going to make them all fucking pay for it. What do you want next? When do you want next? I uh, need to fucking rest this foot up, but I don't know. We'll go back, take a look at the landscape, see how the middleweight division is and... We'll get out as soon as I can again, you know what I mean? Last question, how were the mob celebrating tonight? Yeah, the mob went fucking mad tonight. I'm sure there'll be a few splits rolled for after. <laughs> well, look, I appreciate the time. Congratulations on an incredible comeback performance. Pleasure to talk to you as always, my man.